On October 25, 1989, the Camp Hill Correctional Institution was changed forever. Nestled in the rolling hills of Cumberland County, Pennsylvania, you will find the Camp Hill Correctional Institution. It was originally built in 1941 as a facility for juvenile offenders. 34 years later, it became a correctional institution for adult offenders. The facility had 10 cell blocks designed to hold 1,400 inmates. Due to an increase in inmates, modular dormitory housing units had to be added inside the compound. In 1982, the prison held 1,583 inmates, but in 1989, at its highest peak, the prison held 2,656 inmates, one month before the riot occurred. I think the basic cause was overcrowding, uh, but it's politically difficult to spend money building prisons. The inmates were becoming frustrated by many things at the Camp Hill Prison. The Camp Hill Prison had educational programs for the inmates, but not enough staff to accommodate everyone. Inmates were often idle because they were not permitted into these programs. At any time, there could be up to 800 idle inmates at the Camp Hill Prison. That is roughly one-third of the prison population. The security of the institution was becoming a major concern. About a month before the first riot, a staff member conducting an inspection reported to the superintendent and major of the guard that there was a staffing problem near the E-gate area. He noted, if a fight were to break out, it could easily turn into a major disturbance, and security was not enough for the area. The area identified by this staff member was in fact the exact location of the start of the Camp Hill riot. On October 25, 1989, at approximately 3 p.m., inmates were being led from the exercise field to their cells to prepare for the evening meal. Suddenly at the E-gate, an inmate assaulted a guard. Other officers came to the guard's aid, however, other inmates assaulted them. About 30 minutes later, inmates approached officers again and sprayed them with fire extinguishers. Inmates began to run freely through the compound. Some officers became trapped as others were being chased. There were eight hostages taken, and some of the guards were severely beaten. Inmates began looting the compound and setting it on fire. Inmates holding the hostages began negotiations with Camp Hill personnel. Negotiations lasted about two hours. Inmates agreed to release the hostages and return to their cells. In exchange, they were assured that a meeting to discuss their complaints would occur the next day. The prison was a disaster. By the end of day one, 36 staff and seven inmates were injured. In the early morning of day two of the riot, Guards observed inmates being able to get out of their cells. Unfortunately, there was no effort to clean the cell blocks of debris and weapons on the floor from the earlier uprising. At 7.25 a.m., a memorandum to the commissioner stated, Damage is extensive. Extensive damage was done to the locking mechanism in H block, and it will be some time before the full extent of all block damage has been determined. However, initial evaluation is that there is major damage. Numerous keys, tools, knives, and razors have been lost and are assumed to be in the possession of inmates. The inmates as promised met with staff of the prison about their concerns, but inmates were frustrated by the meeting and believed nothing was accomplished. Later, staff saw inmates reaching through the bars of their cells and up toward the locking devices which had been broken the day before. Um, I happened to be standing outside of a cell block when we looked down the, uh, the cell block and saw the inmates getting out of their cells. They weren't supposed to be getting out of their cells. And what they did was they tripped the, the doors so they could get out at that time. Of course, all these inmates were coming out, so I was chased um, by inmates. 
When the inmates went back into the jail, the, the prison officials did not lock them in. And so it's very bizarre to think about an inmate in a prison without a lock. So what you were able to do, what these inmates were able to do, is they were actually able to reach out of their cell and hit a lever, and the lever opened their doors. Inmates poured out of six cell blocks into the yards. They split into groups and took a total of 10 hostages. At 7 p.m., inmates raced toward the control center, chasing retreating staff. Uh, it basically looked like what I envision a war to look like. There were flames and fire and um, lots of shooting and a loud, you know, loud noises and firefighters. And it just, it looked like a, you know, it looked like a, a riot with a fire. It was scary, actually. The Pennsylvania State Police began to enter the compound. Inmates began throwing objects, including homemade firebombs, saws, bricks, and stones at them. Shots were fired by state police and four inmates were wounded. The Camp Hill prison riot was a surprising event for many people, but people were quick to respond to the signs of help. The Pennsylvania State Police began to arrive at 3.40 p.m. as fire and the rescue personnel were also arriving. There were many other response teams, like the local police, firemen, and other prisons corrections officers. The state police and most other guards and local police had their perimeter heavily guarded. The police, uh, the state police, uh, ambulance, uh, rescue teams, I guess squat teams. Anyway, it was just vehicle after vehicle. Yeah, oh, I guess then the helicopters came in. But as I crested the hill where you come over to go down toward the prison, I could see it was a ball of fire, a major, major fire. In fact, I could even, even see it on the horizon before I got there. And I remember thinking, oh my God, this, this is a major incident. At 7 a.m. on day three, assault teams entered and took back the prison. Over half of the 52-acre prison was destroyed in the three-day uprising. 123 people were injured. Amazingly, there were no deaths and no escapes. The total cost to taxpayers was $14 million. The Camp Hill prison riot will be remembered by many, although what has changed? That, that facility was basically leveled and rebuilt. I mean, it is different as night and day. There are multiple key areas where they've made significant improvements to the system. Manpower, training, security, hardware and technology, and inmate programs. And they have built 12 new prisons with these improvements since the riot. Communications among the responders has also improved. According to Chief Frank Williamson Jr., who was a detective during the time of the riots, in 2008, he simulated a prisoner transport bus takeover, which was a joint training exercise for the Lower Allen and Fairview Police Departments, the Pennsylvania State Police, the Cumberland County Special Response Teams, and the DOC. Recently, in December 2011, we conducted a mass casualty drill at the facility and was the first time the Lower Allen Township was integrated into the DOC command post. On October 25th, 1989, the Camp Hill Correctional Institution was changed forever. It was changed for the good of the inmates, for the good of our citizens, and for the good of the Department of Corrections.